So it's never the easiest thing to recommend a kid's film to anyone over the age of 12, but that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. How to Train Your Dragon is yet another take on the age-old story of a boy and, well, his dragon, and in my opinion, is one of the best retellings of that story. Based on the book of the same name written by Cressida Cal, How to Train Your Dragon follows a young fantasy viking named Hiccup, voiced by Jay Baruchel, whose talents lie within his creativity and ingenuity must struggle with proving his worth to a society who values brute power and strength above all else with the number one hurdle being his own father and chieftain, the uberly hardcore stoic, voiced by Gerard Butler. In this story, brutish fantasy stereotype vikings are in an all-out generation-spanning war with dragons of all shapes and sizes. The dragon war has become so entrenched into their way of life that killing a dragon has become a sort of a rite of passage, and once of age, the kids put all of their focus into doing just that. Which, of course, is a struggle for Hiccup. Even when handed the opportunity on a silver platter, he chokes, and that's when we're introduced to the awesomely adorable Toothless, a dreaded and mysterious Night Fury. It's from this point on that the film begins to truly shine, both learning to rely on one another as the relationship between Hiccup and Toothless begins to solidify. The friendship we watch develop between the two is extremely satisfying as it's definitely earned. Hiccup doesn't just jump on and become an expert in a heartbeat. Instead, we witness the many trials and errors that take place in the breaking of new ground into that of dragon riding. Through his failures, we're able to witness Hiccup not only adapt but also use his findings to push his way from the village fool to essentially celebrity status, catching everyone's attention, especially that of the young yet extremely capable Astrid, who's voiced by America Ferreira. Though definitely playing second fiddle to Hiccup and Toothless, the relationship between Hiccup and Astrid is rather endearing. We watch it develop from an adolescent rivalry to an awkward friendship and finally into a true loving relationship where the affection for one another is obvious yet restrained, especially for a kid's film. You believe that these two characters truly care for one another despite the fact that they're cartoon characters. I've brought up development a few times now, and that's because I truly believe these movies have some of the best character development that I've ever seen in a kid's film, hands down. Even the other Viking children, who seem to be nothing more than background fodder, are brought to life by the talents of Christopher Mintz Plassey, TJ Miller, Kristen Wiig, Jonah Hill, and grow from a mostly annoying selfish brats to a rather capable team of dragon riders by the time of the second film. From what I've seen of the third film, it seems like they're sticking with the maturing of characters, which I'm really excited to see. And that leads me into what, in my opinion, is probably one of the greatest follow-ups to any child's film. We live in a reality where child sequels are passable at best and absolutely horrendous at worst. How to Train Your Dragon 2 was a serious pleasant surprise for me. From its innovative and creative dragon designs to the plot twist that was ruined in the trailer, the sequel really didn't feel like a normal sequel. We were in the same world, yeah, but it wasn't just a cash grab or a rehash of the first film. Whereas the first film was more of an upbeat story about discovering your place in the world and creating true friendships, the sequel took an actually rather dark turn. In the form of Drago, brought stunningly to life by Jaman Hanzu. Whereas Hiccup would gain a dragon's trust through patience and compassion, Drago was the polar opposite, instead forcing himself upon them through pure brute strength and dominance. First film didn't have a true villain, instead it had antagonistic events. With the introduction of Drago, we now had that true villain, and he was a rather intimidating one at that. He's the direct cause of a very impressive battle sequence and true heartbreak for our main hero. And I believe this drastic change in tone to be part of the reason why the sequel is such a fantastic sequel. Outside of the trailer which spoiled the movie, which stop doing that Hollywood, just, just stop it. 
The only true complaint I have is the soundtrack, which I found was a real downgrade from the first. And that may well be because I absolutely adore the soundtrack from the first film, so much so that I actually own it. But outside of that, I really can't find many faults with either movie. That's why, despite how childish it sounds, I keep getting drawn back into this world of fantastical vikings and adorable dragons. And that's why I recommend both movies on a higher standard than just another kid's movie that you can watch with the whole family. They're both genuinely great films, and I can't wait to see where they go next.